Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have quite the train forming up here in terms of invests in the Atlantic. We now have four invests sitting out here. Let's see if I can count them in order because they're all mixed up. This is invest 92L sitting here. We have 93L behind that. We have 94L from the remnants of Emily, which is still around. Yes, the ghost of Emily is still with us. And the 95L, brand new along this frontal boundary northwest of Bermuda, all lined up in a nice little train here, almost as if they came off Africa and moved in this fashion. But they all developed in kind of random order. And these two here are the only two that really came off Africa in this train. But they're all lined up. They all have medium percent chances from the NHC, except for one of them. And I can't even remember which one of them doesn't. But anyway, we have this one up here, which developed along this frontal boundary. It is analyzed along a front by the NHC surface analysis, and thus probably isn't going to get classified unless they really think that this detaches from the front. There's a little bit of a circulation with it here. I've never been really excited about this frontal boundary, as this looks very baroclinic. The jet stream is just above it here, or right to its north, and probably getting baroclinically influenced and will be scooting off to the east-northeast, I don't think will be much of an issue. It's worth it's worth mentioning, but it's no threat to anybody, and I doubt we'll actually deserve a classification, but we will see. This here is what split off from Emily. It's not actually the surface circulation from Emily, but kind of split off from it here, trying to retrograde around this ridge. You can see the clockwise flow of air right here, northeast of the Bahamas, and this is trying to come down from it. It's getting sheared strongly out of the northeast from the flow around this ridge, and that's also causing sinking air and subsidence in here, which is why systems like this that try to come back around generally don't make it. It is possible that this tries to look like something that could cause mischief down here. I still have doubts that this will be anything significant, but with this coming up pretty close behind it, it may be interesting to see what this does around here as this tries to come northwest. And that's the other thing back here is 92L is a lot farther north than it was yesterday. It was a wave that was negatively tilted all the way down here. The old center, if it was still moving, would be right about here. But the thunderstorm cluster got cut off to the north here due to all this dry air in training, forced the southern part back into the intertropical convergence zone, and made this split off to the north, now way up there at latitude 18 north is where this is now, pretty far north, heading west-northwest. And the track of this will be interesting. There's a big break here between the Atlantic Ridge, the Azores High, and the Bermuda High right here, where the remnants of Emily are. It's tempting to think that this will curve right on up and out very quickly here. But if you notice where this ridge is here, if you follow it on the imagery, you can see that it's starting to build westward pretty fast here, just about as fast as 92L is moving. And as this feature here gets out of the way to the west, and part of it may split off to the northeast as well, this ridge will build in pretty far to the west and keep this on a west-northwest course for a while, probably not allowing it to fully recurve until near Bermuda. And the fact that it's farther north than yesterday means that Bermuda is much more in the area of target for this potential system as it moves out. This may not get farther west than Bermuda now given how far north it has reformed since yesterday by a good 5 degrees latitude, which is significant in terms of its track. 93L back here has lost a lot of its convection from yesterday, and I noted that we shouldn't get too excited about immediate development of this because of the fact that it didn't have that much of a circulation, and it still doesn't, and it's still embedded in in the monsoon trough in here, which means that this large boundary of convergence is not allowing the system to hog as much of that convergence as it would like to have. These systems like to hog all of the air coming into them instead of sharing it with a large boundary like the ITZZ or the monsoon trough. So until it gets separated from this on its way west, it may have issues developing. But there will be warmer water waiting for it in here. And the weaker it stays now, the bigger of a problem it could be farther west because it could try to get farther south, more deeper into the Caribbean before turning north the longer that it stays weak. So in a sense, it's not that great of news for us that it is not developing yet because that means that if it does develop down the road, it'll be closer to land areas in here that may have to watch it pretty closely. And to boot, this is the MJO forecast from the GFS here. Green colors represent upward motion, which is favorable for thunderstorm activity and is favorable for tropical cyclones to develop and strengthen. We've got a little bit, it's pretty pretty weak signal right now. The MJO is kind of in that middle portion where it's not very well defined. Over the next 
couple of weeks, it's supposed to get into octants 1 and 2, and that favors upward motion of the Atlantic Basin. You can see a lot of downward motion develops in the Pacific, which argues for upward motion developing in the Atlantic. And we can see that by day 5, 10, and 15, we have a lot of green showing up in the Atlantic here. And what this means is that as our invests are coming west, particularly 93L, it will be encountering steadily more favorable conditions in the central and western Atlantic and the Caribbean as it journeys westward. So as the waters are warming in here, you notice right now, it's kind of void in here. We don't have the MJO supporting a lot of thunderstorm activity, but as this gets farther west into the warmer water in here, it will be encountering both the warmer water and a more favorable MJO, meaning that this region may be where it actually tries to develop more so than out here. And that's the danger with these things as they, if they get kept weak, they come farther west and develop more on top of the land areas, which is never a great situation because it can surprise people. It really can. This is the European from last night, day five, and we have 92L recurving out here. I don't even know where it is. The European doesn't show it very well defined in here. It's somewhere along this boundary curving out to the northeast. 93L is back here near the islands, coming in pretty far south, weak as you can see on the model, fairly broad, open wave. And then what happens is although we have an upper weakness along the eastern seaboard, this just keeps going and it keeps going westward. So by the time we go out another five days today, 10, it has it developing in the Western Caribbean making landfall on the Yucatan. This is a big shift from recent runs, which had it out north of the Caribbean, which would have made a little bit more sense given the weakness here. But if it really does stay as weak as it is, this is the kind of thing that could have the potential to happen. I think this is a little bit too far south. We have the GFS also showing the same kind of situation on the 6Z run. Again, another major shift from the 0Z. The runs are jumping around a lot right now. And so I wouldn't focus too much on this. This, in my mind, this kind of situation depicted by these late night runs is a little bit too far south, given that we're going to have a persistent weakness over the eastern seaboard. But we have a long time to watch these. And things can change in the course of 10 days, because again, this is day 11 here on the GFS. This is a long ways out. There's a lot of details that have yet to get worked out. These are the GFS ensembles for day four, showing 500 millibar heights and anomalies. Day four, we have this sharp trough over the eastern seaboard. 92L is likely somewhere in here getting recurved off to the northeast by this. Again, not really a threat to land. It may not even develop at all. So this is not a huge deal. 93L is going to be somewhere back here, or back here rather, where this bulge in the 500 millibar isohips is. And then if we go out to day six, Here's where that pattern goes. This trough is way out here. It leaves just as fast as it comes, just like all the other troughs that have tried to dig into the Western Atlantic y this year. They don't like to stick around too long, so this lifts out pretty fast. And then we have ridging developing over southeastern Canada, and the flow here is a lot flatter on average. We have a couple of short waves here, but this is a pretty flat flow. There are no really deep amplified troughs over the east over uh, the Western Atlantic, but we do have the ridge back here near Texas in the Four Corners region, and then we have our Atlantic ridge out here. So the mean break is still in between here, which means that latitude gains by 93L are probably going to be in this region, which means that if it tries to come in the Caribbean, it may try to sneak north, perhaps over the islands, somewhere in this area. I'm generalizing right now because the details are still going to be fuzzy with this fragile pattern. I do think that the GFS and the European bringing it in here may be a little bit premature and too far south. We will see how future runs deal with this. However, such a weak system, if it remains weak coming in, as I've been suggesting, then it may have a chance to sneak more underneath and get into these areas than the models were indicating before. So it's going to be interesting. This is a fragile, complex pattern, just like we've had with all the other storms coming towards the eastern seaboard this year, because this strong Texas ridge keeps the weakness here, but the ridging keeps trying to develop more over the top as the season progresses. So this is the kind of pattern that is fragile, can recurve some storms, but can also bring some storms into the coast here. So this is something that needs to be watched pretty carefully. And if we go on to day 15 on the GFS, just to show you, the ridging continues to develop over Hudson Bay in southeast Canada and the Great Lakes. Classic pattern that I've shown you guys in the analogs multiple times that can bring storms to the coast and then look where the weakness is. 
over the central Gulf Coast, something we have not seen all season. The Texas Ridge finally breaks down on this run here, and the weakness is over the central Gulf Coast, which implies that storms could actually get into the Gulf of Mexico and threaten the north Gulf Coast for the first time in the season, except for dawn, which was kept weak because of this ridge. But the chance for a hurricane would be greater if this pattern were to develop if the Texas Ridge actually breaks down and the ridging shifts northward like those analog packages indicated, then we may start opening up the Gulf of Mexico as well into late August and September. So we will see if this verifies. This is also a long way out, but I figured I would show you just to see that the models are starting to hint at the kind of things we've been talking about all season long were hinted at by the analogs from history. Things that have happened before can happen again. If this pattern develops, it'll be another proof of that. So we'll be watching closely as this peak of the season starts to wind up. We have a lot of action out there right now. Four systems right now all lined up. The MJO is coming back into this area of the world. This one, 93L is the only real threat to land areas here. 92L may be something for Bermuda to watch, but probably not too strong of a system as that moves out. So right now we're really keeping our eyes on 93L to see if it develops farther west and tries to threaten perhaps the Northeast Caribbean islands first before anyone else in the next few days. So we'll keep an eye on these things closely this week and next week. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.